Welcome to MSP Voice, a weekly show that brings you information from MSPs for MSPs. This is MSP Voice. Okay, great. Thanks, everyone. This is MSP Voice uh, podcast. This is episode number one. So this is our, our first shot at it. Um, today, I am very honored to have Tom Lawrence uh, from Lawrence Technology Services, Lawrence Systems, um, to be our first guest. Um, you may know Tom from his very popular YouTube channel. Um, he's got some amazing videos, I think over 500 now, uh, maybe yes. 501. Um, so um, lots of, of tons of great resources there. If you, if you haven't checked out his YouTube channel, um, it's in the show notes, definitely check it out. Um, he's also on Twitter, got his handle in, in, in the show notes and those types of things. So um, with that, Tom, tell us a little bit about yourself. So um, I have been working in technology since uh, 1994. That was my first job in the market and, and uh, you know, connecting old token ring networks and all that fun stuff. Ooh. So, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been at this for a while. And I say first job because obviously uh, even before then I was on BBSs. I was on anything I could get my hands on technology, you know, connecting the old uh, modem. I did not actually have the, that analog coupler for those of you that have watched war games <laughs> and things like that. I, I was started just after the analog couplers. <laughs> yeah. So I, you know, somewhere I, I started my career, my career in IT, you know, I guess it was 92. Um, I was in college and I worked for campus computing and we spent a whole summer rewiring the entire campus getting rid of all the old token ring putting in ethernet so i spent a, a, a whole summer you know terminating cat5 cables um throughout pretty much throughout campus and then we set up all these new computers um so it was uh, it was a great learning experience uh, for me back then yeah it's one of those things i uh you have like you end up with a passion for it. Like this is just so neat, and it's like magic when it works. So I'm yeah. always, you know, it's it's I I don't uh, it's not worn off on me. I'm you know in this business now for over 20 years, and I'm still everything's magical. It's different magical things. Token rings not magical. Yeah. Cat five's not virtualization <laughs> magical. <laughs> yes. So what what kind of led you into you know the managed services type type arena? So I actually, my career started obviously working for uh, small uh, computer shops and then moved into the corporate world and where I was actually an IT director. And I managed everything inside, you know, the company. And uh, so you get a clear vision. I understand, you know, how the businesses operate, worked hand in hand with the president of the company. So mm -hmm. then when I left there and started my own business, I was always seeking a way to kind of come up with a way to work with clients in a more engaging way rather than call me when it's broke. And it wasn't as big of a deal when I started in 2003, but over time it became a really big deal because of patches, security, uh, the internet. So it's kind of like, it led me in there because if you don't get these people patched, they always will want to know, a smart business person is going to ask the post analysis, what could we have done to prevent this? You have mm -hmm. maintenance programs for your vehicles. I, I actually worked in the transportation uh, industry and managed services for vehicles is a thing forever because you sign up for maintenance contracts with them. Computers are kind of the same way. So it's some of the knowledge I had from the transportation industry and just like, look, this is, you know, us, uh, doing the analysis, what can we do to prevent this? Well, if we check the machine, you know, back then it was like once a month we could check for patches and you were still plenty safe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not like now where <laughs> there's a day. zero day, I have an hour to load it. <laughs> <laughs> Today's very different. But um, so we kind of worked our way into having different maintenance agreements with clients. So we would regularly come in and work on their systems. It really wasn't called back in 2004 when we started all this managed services. It was just maintenance mm -hmm. agreements. So I still see MSP and I'm like, oh, maintenance service program. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was called then. It was our maintenance service programs or MSP. So yeah. it's still in my head like that. <laughs> but, but that sounds like a kind of a typical transition of, of you know, kind of starting out with break fix, you know, and, and, yeah. and then transitioning into, you know, basically a, a managed um, or maintenance type of type of program for for your customers. Yeah, and we still do break fix. It's not like we don't do any of them. And a lot of times, uh, I think break fix people are ones that just haven't signed up yet for our MSP products. <laughs> so, um, but there's occasional. Just sometimes it's one off stuff that we do for clients because they're mm -hmm. fairly savvy internally, and they actually are on top of things. And uh, 
you know, so it, it's, we don't mind the hybrid approach of still doing some of them, but of course our priority, and we always let the break fix people know, look, if there's two tasks that have to happen at the same time, the MSP client is the first client to get things yeah. done. So that makes sense. And then do you kind of focus on any type of customers? Do you focus on a vertical or do you just work with pretty much anybody and, and everybody? You know, uh, we're heavy manufacturing here uh, due to where we're at in Detroit. Uh, the automotive industry is still, uh, for all its ups and downs, the lifeblood of the Detroit and the outer Detroit areas until you get into the Ann Arbor College Town area. Uh, so the, it's not like we tried to focus on the transportation vertical, but we have a lot of transportation companies. We have a lot of uh, businesses that support them and we also have a lot of machine tool shop companies so it's not as much that we tried to focus on a vertical that just happens to be what is it within a 30 or 40 mile radius of us a lot uh, but they all kind of are cookie cutter in the way that they run um, they're all gonna run QuickBooks about 90% of them I think last time I checked run QuickBooks uh, and they all have Windows computers of course so uh, that combination means they're pretty pretty even across the board from company to company. And there's actually, when it comes to the software that the transportation providers run, there's not a big variety in that either. So Okay. So I guess that, that makes things easy. Yeah. Um, so, but from, from your business standpoint and as you manage these customers, what, what kind of software have you standardized on? I mean, you know, I'm, I'm assuming you use some sort of RMM, you've got yeah. PSA and all those types of things. So any, uh, any advice there? Uh, we really like the solar winds. Uh, I've been really happy with it. And it's also... Uh, been a good relationship. They, their support's been good the few times we've needed them. Uh, there's always bumps in the road. And I've, it, it's great being able to, I was at an event where I got to meet some of the developers and you know they're all pulling their hair out with some of the problems, but the problems are across the board for all the RMM platforms when it comes to like yeah. Windows updates and things like that. And they go, Microsoft is at fault. And they say, I was at a Microsoft event. Of course, they're like, we're here at the Microsoft event to try and sort these problems out because hmm. Microsoft's upgrade path is not as uh, clear. That being said, uh, advice would be stay away from some of those, hey, I can get this for free so I can then do things for less money. I see people jumping on some of those and those companies are not always quality, they're not always stable and there's been a couple of them that have had security breaches. So the thing that you wanted to protect was the source of the hack and uh, I did a video yeah. about that. And I'll just say their name, Kaseya, they've had three times that they have been uh, hacked and they even tried to remove it from their website. And of course, Wayback My Machine is, <laughs> is, yeah. is a wonderful thing when I mean, they had to admit, and they, they said it was a rogue actor. Someone inside their office did it. He was installing crypto miners on people's uh, machines to make money. But I'm like, mm -hmm. if you're, you got to trust the PSA platform, that also means you got to pay a lot of money for it sometimes. They're not the yeah. cheapest. But if you want to ever grow and expand, you'll find that, you know, ConnectWise is really popular. SolarWinds is really popular. There's a couple of them out there. But the, the reason they're kind of big and the reason they're kind of expensive is they're a good product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, you know, it... And, and I understand too, but starting out, sometimes people, you know, like you said, they can't necessarily afford or have that kind of outlay for, for something. So, you know, hopefully there's some solutions that are okay that, that yeah. won't break the bank. Yeah. And it's the thing, there's other, yeah. there's other ones out there that are good. Uh, be cautious, be careful. And it, it, and, you know, we're always trying to reevaluate. It's it's really tough uh, as you go on a business to reevaluate because one, you're making money with what you have. Two, yeah. it's a lot of pain. Once you have as many clients signed up, I'm like, okay, there's 500 workstations. We're going to have to move over to something else if we change our mind mm -hmm. about. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, that's a we lot won't talk about vendor lock in today, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, but is, it's something you have to think about. So that's why yeah. you want to plan carefully. <laughs> yeah. What, what about what about customer acquisition? Are, are you pretty much just word of mouth? Do you advertise? Um, so is it even as we speak, if there is a business event only two miles from here uh, going on that's uh, my sales guys at, uh, those are still some of the most effective uh, ways. And I don't know if it's the nature of the market, but a lot of people say, oh, LinkedIn is great. I'm like, I, we take and look at our ideal clients and you you look at where they're at. So I mm -hmm. talked to Paul, he owns a company that's local. And I'm like, okay, Paul, what do you use? He goes, I ain't been on LinkedIn in five years. I'm like, you're a great client, you're not there. So we the, because they're not using it, it doesn't make an easy, effective way for us to market. Uh, what's really okay. we found effective in the Detroit area has been going to physical events, uh, showing up at business association events, chambers of commerce events, and things like that. Uh, so I think that maybe, uh, area specific uh, where you have people who are just less savvy online. Matter of fact, some of the owners of the businesses hardly use technology themselves at all, mm -hmm. other than only as a tool to get their work done and not anything else. They're not computer people. So some of it is just making sure that 
you, where's your target audience? Uh, you know, if you're in the medical market, going to some of the medical events, if you're in, you know, law offices, going to some of the law events, uh, things like that showing up there. For us, it's going to a lot of these business association events. That's where we meet a lot of our clients. And YouTube's been an amazing referral uh, for a lot of the uh, bigger jobs that we do related to cabling and things like that. Yeah, I'm sure. Because like I said, your, your YouTube is, is very popular and I love the stuff that you put out there. Um, what about, you know, for someone just getting started? Um, you know, maybe, you know, they're at an employer now and they're like, well, I can do this better and make more money by myself. I don't need, I don't need this. Or maybe they're trying to transition from, you know, just helping out family to, to actually starting a business. Do you have any like getting started advice, uh, for the, for those kinds of folks? Learn marketing. Uh, that is an important <laughs> aspect. And I, I say that um, because I was, you know, thinking in my head when I started, I'm like, I'm a smart guy. Uh, I know all this tech stuff. I was an IT director for this big, you know, supply company and I know all this tech stuff. But turns out knowing it and getting people to know that you know something, two very, very different <laughs> things. And it was a struggle for me um, to land new clients. I was lucky because I had a few good clients to begin with uh, that I knew from the industry I worked in when I left the job and turned them actually. I kind of left a job, but turned a job into my first client. So uh, wow. a little bit different transition for me the way I started. But if you just want to go cold calling and hit the door, learn some marketing. Don't be afraid to go to those events. Uh, and I've heard a lot of good luck. I, we don't, there's actually a competing thing here, so we don't use it. But BNI is very popular and we're, okay. it's a referral networking group. It's a great way to get started and meet some business owners um, hands on. So those. Those are things that are, but you have to be at least a little bit social um, and don't start with tech. Uh, start with, hey, how you doing? Uh, find <laughs> yeah. some other conversation starter because they're not as interested in the latest virtualization software as you might be. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, speaking about technology, what's um, what technologies are, are you most excited about, you know, like today? You know, stuff either today or, or upcoming. Upcoming, um, so I love all this in, I kind of feel, so, Forever ago, I started playing with software-defined networking, which is your software-based firewalls, which they were kind mm -hmm. of like, oh no, you have to run only this Cisco hardware box. Um, and now uh, they just had an announcement on the PFSense uh, Twitter. They were talking about just how much of Azure and AWS has PFSense installed. And uh, when we were interviewing some people over at Microsoft uh, for the other podcast they do, they talked a lot about how they had to do a lot of tweaking at the Azure data centers to uh, support uh, port BSD kernels. And I said, is it because of PF sense? And he said, that's exactly why. So software defined mm -hmm. networking combined with virtualization. And it's just amazing, like how inexpensive you can build out an entire lab for, for testing, but then how it scales up globally and all the different virtualization technologies, being able to pass running machines uh, between data centers, between not just machines locally, but for failover and things like that. It, it's as much as I know how it works, it's still like magic to me watching it work going, hold on, we need to take down this uh, storage. So move while the servers are on over to the mm -hmm. other storage. All right, now we can take it down and upgrade it and then move that storage back over. Um, we did a video too on the uh, uh, free NAS, true NAS equipment where they have failover motherboards that can be replaced without shutting down the machine. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is a level of magic that I never thought when I started in the 90s. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, downtime is becoming because and people just come to expect it from the consumer side or even the business side going, mm -hmm. what do you mean there's down for maintenance? That was a big deal. We used to take things down for maintenance to do database updates and stuff like that. In the early days now, people just expect you to have that technology running in the background so you can provide complete continuity. So that's yeah. fascinating to me and exciting all at the same time. Okay. What, um, what technologies, I guess, worry you the most or are you less excited about? Um, I think we're trying to hook every toaster up to the internet, and I don't know that that's a great idea. <laughs> so, uh, there was such a great article, and I covered it a while ago, uh, about the fish tank and how they used a IoT fish tank to steal data out of a casino. Um, <laughs> they just plugged it into their network, and they're like, let's cook the fish tank up, and we can monitor things on it, because this is something, apparently, fish tanks need Wi-Fi. And it turned out to not be well made, and there was a security problem with it. Mm -hmm. uh, Microsoft's actually doing an impressive step to protect the IoT, which is good. They seem to be, get, I'm not clear on all of it. There's some big announcements they have related to it, but it looks like they're building a more secure IoT platform that they're not going to charge licensing fees for, so it doesn't sound like something Microsoft usually does. But um, <laughs> I know, but it's still interesting, and I think that kind of needs to be done because uh, there's been so many times these IoT vendors, they use the same chips, and they'll start stamping out the same 
uh, keys in all the chip. So there's one thing that worries me a lot is was everyone wants to plug everything in. Uh, we we create for a lot of our clients, we call it the network of insecure things. Um, that mm -hmm. is the IoT network for them <laughs> with limited amounts of bandwidth and no relationship to the rest of the network. Because if something goes awry over there, it's not going to take up too much bandwidth and it's not going to cause problems. Uh, the other thing that worries me a lot is just uh, legacy systems. Uh, there's so, so much of them out there. Uh, we're seeing, you know, all these old legacy websites that are kind of abandoned, being hacked and taken down or used for mm -hmm. other reasons. Um, and we, being back to the automotive industry, to support a ton of legacy systems. Uh, we've been taking them off of the physical boxes that are 10 years old and virtualizing them. But uh, we've kind of had to create these little lockdowns for them because the companies just aren't ready to change. Uh, we still have some Windows 95 machines running. Yeah. They, they run a laser cutter. So if that's not a little scary that there's a giant laser machine <laughs> cutting serial numbers running on Windows 95 right now today. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like when you when you go through an airport and the system crashes and you're like, oh, look, they're running Windows 95 behind that. It's like yeah. on the screen. It's, so it's they, they, uh, legacy systems offer a big threat surface. So we do a lot to try to uh, sandbox them as much as we can. Uh, we do have one OS2 client. They're a large manufacturer oh, wow. of products that are shipped uh, all around. I won't say their name, but their their entire manufacturing base runs on OS2 Warp. <laughs> it's insane. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I, I know a company that uh, was, was all in on that many years ago when my dad worked for them. So, so. Hey, they're all in on it still because they didn't <laughs> broke. They're seeing yeah. some that run and mill all this stuff. It's a massive operation and they're like, it works. Uh -huh. We just keep cloning yeah. hard drives. That's how we keep it working. <laughs> Thanks, wow. eBay. Yeah, we, we find the hard drives in eBay that will work with them and we clone these old ID hard drives to keep them uh, in case one of the CNCs go down. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, so, one more, you, in terms of MSP and, and kind of the idea of community, I know, you know, you talk, we talk about customer acquisition and going to, to events and things like that for customers, but what about, you know, being part of the MSP community? I mean, you obviously have a very popular YouTube channel, um, you know, and, and I know that a lot of people reach out to you through that, um, you know, you answer their questions, those types of things, but what do you think, you know, what do you think in terms of community of, of MSPs and, and networking and those types of things. Where do you, where do you see MSPs hanging out and, and doing things? Um, a combination of places, the, I think the, for, especially for those getting started, some of the Facebook groups have been really good uh, to help get you started and help you kind of mm -hmm. uh, acclimate yourself to it. Some of the terminology, what is an RMM? What is a PSA? Why do you need one? <laughs> right? Which one should you choose? So there's a lot of great interactive discussion. There's a lot of people, um, that are in some of these groups that are very forthcoming with information, which I think is wonderful. Mm -hmm. So they'll tell you, you know, these are what, this is what I like about this software, this software, this is what we use. Uh, so they're great places to kind of get your feet wet. Um, Reddit, love Reddit, uh, Reddit slash MSP. It's a lot of great resources yeah. in here. And um, mm -hmm. it's nice because you look at it because you don't see a ton of information. Like you're like, oh, there's not like some of the other subreddits. So it's got millions of people in it with thousands of comments, but better, more concise, fewer comments. So it's actually easier to read yeah. through. There's uh, BS in there. Um, other than that, I, I people having discussions on like forums uh, in some of the uh, YouTube stuff I reply to. There's that. Mm -hmm. I don't belong to any of the professional groups. I've gone back and forth about them. Um, I, I don't know enough about them. I've thought about joining them, but a lot of them seem to really focus on some of your marketing stuff, which I yeah. just, my interest is way more, I'm way more geek and less business. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Okay, so that brings us to kind of the fun part, maybe. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it goes, is right. <laughs> uh, what we're calling our, our rapid fire round. Um, and so you haven't seen these questions in advance. Nope. But um, just, you know, real quick, simple answer. Um, I've got seven questions, and, uh, and, and we'll, we're going to see how it goes. Okay? All right. So iOS or Android? Android. Uh, Mac, Linux, or Windows? Linux. I knew that one. Yeah. Uh, Amazon or <laughs> Azure? I like Azure. Okay. Local backups, cloud, or both? Both. Okay. Facebook, yes or no? Yep. Okay. Um, Office Suites, 365, G Suite, Open Office, LibreOffice? Uh, G Suite. G Suite, okay. And then which is worse, printer support or vendor cold calls? Ah. Uh. Fender cold calls. Okay, great. <laughs> See, that was that was that was pretty harmless. Um, that was pretty yeah. harmless. 
Well, I knew that I, I knew the Mac, Linux, or Windows question uh, before I asked it, but I, you know, I had to because the G Suite one probably surprised you, though. So <laughs> it, it did surprise me a little bit, and you know, it's been interesting here. You know, where I'm at now, we use G Suite, and I was like, "Wow, this is so awesome!" Um, I actually, I'm really getting to like it, uh, and um, I have I have a Chromebook, and that's what I travel with now is my Chromebook because I can get everything done on it. Uh, yeah, it's it's really impressive. Um, actually, I'm working. I'm going to be working with someone to do a video because they're kind of all in on the Office uh, 365 suite. We're going to do a feature comparison. We're going to do a back and forth video together oh. uh, about you know mine's better than yours. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I tell you, man, G Suite. I I was an early beta sign up for it and I was blown away by it. And I've created all kinds of fun advanced things uh, for it. And you, you know, uh, what you don't realize is you can even in a spreadsheet pull in real time data from a multitude of sources. Mm -hmm. I set up a baseball thing for someone for doing their fantasy uh, baseball. <laughs> It'll pull in all the real time stats into the spreadsheet with feeds so they can actually see everything in real time. It'll even do stocks like that. Cool. So that's yeah, a wonderful tool, wonderful tool. <laughs> okay. So any closing remarks? Um, if you're gonna get started in business, and I tell this people, uh, a business plan is not my job sucks and I'm gonna do it for cheap. Those are not, <laughs> so for people that wanna get started in business, I always say, I'm just gonna cut the uh, other guy's price in half. I'm like, no, no, uh, I, there's an article and you can probably uh, find it. How I service my clients better by raising my rates. And mm -hmm. I, I believe in it a lot. If you just do, unless you have a more clever way to do it, you can't just um, cut the price and say, I'm gonna just do it for half what the other guy does and I'll be, you know, in the market, you do have to charge for your time. You have to charge for things. So that's always my business advice for people starting out. Um, I hate my job is not a business plan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for being our first guest here on MSP Voice. And uh, again, check out Tom's YouTube channel. It's great. Lots of great resources. And uh, we'll see you next week. All right. Thanks for having me.